Okay, in this video, uh, we want to discuss what Maxwell's equations are. So in textbooks or in university, uh, these equations are often described in very mathematical terms. And as a result, a lot of times you come out knowing how to manipulate very complicated equations, but you don't really know what they mean or how to ever use them in real life. So the purpose of this video is to give an intuitive, uh, minimal math explanation of Maxwell's equations that will be useful to practicing science scientists and somebody who just wants to know what these equations mean. So here are Maxwell's equations. They're a set of four uh, somewhat complicated looking uh, equations, vector equations actually, and these all just govern the way that the electric and the magnetic field exist in nature. So these four equations describe how the electric and magnetic field can distribute themselves or what configuration they can take. And they describe uh, what types of physical phenomena can give rise to electric and magnetic fields. And then, so just a brief aside, the D and B are pretty much the same as the electric and magnetic field governed by uh, just material parameters. So sometimes, most of the time, you see the equations written by this, but really all we're talking about is the electric and magnetic field. Okay, so what do these equations mean? Let's start with the first one, Gauss's Law. So this uh, first equation is equivalent to saying uh, charges of the same sign repel each other. So if you have two positive charges, which are just things that exist in nature, they will repel. So if you have two negative charges, they push away. If you have one positive charge and one negative charge, they're going to be drawn together. Opposites attract. So that's where this comes from. What this actually means is this symbol means the di divergence. It means the fields around a point. So in this case, D, which is basically equivalent to the electric field, uh, the divergence is equivalent to the volume charge density. So this is how much charge, which is measured in coulombs, exists over a given volume. So if we have a, a small point charge, this is saying that divergence is equal to the amount of charge here. So that means the fields go away from the charge. So if the charge was negative, the electric fields must point in. And finally, this says if there is no charge, if the divergence is zero, then we cannot have a field distribution that looks like this. Like if the electric field goes like this, there has to be a charge here. Second of Maxwell's equations, this one, which is Gauss's law for uh, magnetic fields, says something, uh, basically the divergence of the magnetic field or the magnetic flux density, the same thing, is zero. So this uh, means basically there is no isolated magnetic charge, which means you cannot find a magnetic monopole that's going to have this type of distribution. This also says you'll never find magnetic fields that diverge away from a point uh, like this. So this equation is kind of simpler than the electric uh, Gauss's law. So there is no magnetic monopoles that attract each other, uh, as in the electric field case. Okay, the third of Maxwell's equations is known as Faraday's Law. So this one starts, the left-hand side here is the curl of E. So this symbol del cross means curl. So as the divergence is a measure of how much fields flow away from something, the curl is a measure of how fields wrap around something. So for instance, if we look at the point here, and we imagine this is an E field, then the curl here would exist. There's a flowing of electric field. Here, the curl is zero because the fields just move out in a way that has divergence. Here, the divergence is zero, but we do have a curl. So the curl of E, the rate at which uh, an electric field swirls around something, is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic field. So this means uh, two things. One is if we have a time-changing magnetic field, so if the magnetic field is changing within this loop here, it's going to give rise to an electric field that swirls. And 
similarly, if we have an electric field that swirls this way, we're going to have a magnetic field uh, through this loop that's changing in time. So this originally was done, uh, Faraday's law, uh, they had an experiment where they changed the magnetic field uh, through an electric circuit and measured the current that was coming out. They found that when uh, the magnetic field was changing within a loop, there would be this flow of current depending on whether the magnetic field was uh, increasing or decreasing. So this is an experimentally found uh, law that's somewhat simple to understand that manifests itself by this uh, pretty complicated equation. The curl of the electric field is equal to the time rate of change of the magnetic field. Okay, the, the last of Maxwell's equations uh, is this, which is known as Ampere's Law. So this says the curl of the magnetic field is equal to the time rate of change of the electric field plus the electric current density. So if we just start with the curl of H equals J, uh, this is electric current density. So if you think about current flowing on a wire, you know, you have current usually represented by amps. Here it's current density, so you know the units are amps per square meter. If you have current flowing through a wire, then this says the magnetic field circles around the wire by the right hand rule. So if current is flowing this way, the magnetic field wraps around it. So that's the first interpretation. So if we add the second term, the curl of the magnetic field is equal to this. Uh, this is known as the displacement current density. So this was Maxwell's great contribution that really made Maxwell's equations a whole and make sense and describe the electric and magnetic fields. So this term is known as displacement current density. And the easy way to think about it is it's the measure of the current through a capacitor. So if you think about this circuit and you have an AC voltage source, you're still going to have current flowing. But if you think about between a parallel plate capacitor, you have nothing. You have air or vacuum or whatever you want, but no conduction path. So how does the current get through here? So Maxwell introduced this term, which is the rate of change of the electric field with respect to time. And that says that if we have this describes current going through a non-conductive path, as in this case. And when this current in here also gives rise uh, to a circulating magnetic field. So we have two different uh, phenomena that can give rise to a circulating magnetic field. And current density, which is conductive current density, as opposed to displacement current density, is equal to sigma e. So if you have an electric field in a conductor then you'll have current flow. So that's, we can actually get rid of this J term and write partial D with respect to T plus sigma E. And again, we're back to just electric fields and magnetic fields. So as a whole, we have a bunch of equations that describe what gives rise to electric and magnetic fields. You know, uh, electric charge gives rise to, you know, a diverging electric field. Flowing electric charge gives rise uh, flowing electric charge is current. That gives rise to a rotating magnetic field, and then how they all interact is uh, governed by these equations. So one thing you note is that if we have a changing magnetic field, that gives rise to a curling electric field. And if we have a changing electric field in time, that gives rise to a rotating electric field. So these equations, if you want to go through a bunch of complex math, you're going to end up with what's known as the wave equation, which, for instance, I'll just write as so. This says the rate of so if we have an electric field, uh, you know, traveling in the z direction, the rate of change of the electric field in the z direction, actually the second derivative is kind of the acceleration, if you want to think of that, is equal to the rate of the acceleration in time of the electric field. So the second derivative with respect to time. So that comes directly from here. You know, a time change in electric field gives rise to a rotating H field. This is rotating, so it's changing in time. That means that's going to give rise to a rotating E field. And on and on and on, we have a wave equation. And one of the big things about Maxwell's equations is that this is derived directly from here. And these are all experimental results. 
But this says that any shape electric field can travel in space. And also says that no matter what frequency or what shape it is, they all travel at sea, the speed of light. And that is one of the big consequences of uh, Maxwell's equations. Okay, so anyway, that's a brief overview of what Maxwell's equations are, uh, what they mean. And uh, I know I went through some of that kind of quick. Like, for instance, I didn't say anything like, what is epsilon? That's permittivity. But if you go to, uh, I made this website, maxwells-equations.com, and uh, you can go through and, like, you want to know, I, I put all of Maxwell's equations right here. And then I made it so you can click on, you know, any single part of it. It's like, oh, what's the divergence? I can click there. Oh, it tells me. That's cool. Or what's D? I can click on that and figure it out. Or what is this partial B? It explains it. So you can kind of go through and figure out uh, what everything is. I think that's kind of cool. And then so I basically go through and give more description of what everything is like Faraday's law. I can actually describe the experiment here. Um, go through and, you know, the wave equation that I briefly went over, I explain it there, and then just a lot more information if you really want to understand uh, what's going on. So I hope that uh, gives you a little bit of an idea of what Maxwell's equations are.